Alright guys, so first things first, I want to give Ian Hubert all of the credit. He basically showcased this technique in Blender, but I'll be showing you how to do this in Cinema 4D using the built-in native tools. So this is going to be a very, very basic tutorial on rigging. I'll show you how to set up this rig. So you can see I've got this 3D scanned human over here. I can move his head. I can select different regions and even move a little bit of his body. So you obviously won't be able to completely repose an already posed 3D human. We can only do some subtle movements but it's a cool way to even create some subtle idle animation so i'll be showing you how to do this from start to finish and without further ado let's get started okay so just so you guys can follow along with this tutorial check the description of the top comment there's a link to this exact same 3d scanned human it's on cg trader you can go ahead you can see it's a free download so go ahead and download that and then we'll be moving over to cinema 4d all right so i'm going to go to file merge objects and go and find the OBJ of this 3D scanned human. Click on open. I'm going to leave this default. Click on OK. And there we go. We've got our 3D scanned character in our viewport. Okay, so let's set up the rig. But the first thing that I want to do is I want to orientate my camera so that I'm looking at the 3D character from a side view. Then I want to go to display. By default, mine is on quick shading. I want to select lines. So it creates a, wire, a wireframe view. I can see through the entire character. And this just makes it a lot easier when I'm creating the armature or these joints uh, for our character. So to do that, I want to go to the character tab and select join tool. So to use the join tool, just hold on control and left click to create your first joint. So I'm going to start you by the feet. So control, left click. I'm going to create another uh, joint. Make sure you hold, you're still holding down control. And I'm going to create a joint by the knees, a joint by the groin, one over here by the chest, one by the neck, and another joint by the head. So this is a very basic uh, armature or rig for this particular 3D scan character. With other 3D scan characters, you might have to add more joints to accommodate for better movement in certain regions. Like maybe you'll have to add a couple more joints over here to have better control over the head. You'll have to experiment and see what works best. But with this character, this rig, it's extremely basic, but it allows me to have control over certain regions. So you can see I created a neck and a head joint so that I can move the head. I created a chest and a groin joint so I can move this entire torso region. I created a knee and a foot joint so that I just have a little bit of control over the calves and the thighs and just some movement over here by the knees. Now sometimes your rig might not be placed inside of your 3D character. So while you still have this tool selected, you can just select the joints and move them around and reposition them. So I'm still going to be doing that with this character. So I'm just repositioning some of these joints so that it's better aligned. Let me move to the side view. This joint over here that's connected to the chest, I want it to be better aligned with the spine. Okay, just try and mimic the character's pose. Right, and just align these joints so it's a little bit more accurate. And something that looks logical and makes sense as well. Or else you're going to get some really strange rotation when this is actually binded to your character. Okay, so the rig is in place. Now I'm going to click on this plus icon over here. You will see that it created a root fo folder with all of the joints. Now I just want to make sure I'm holding down shift and selecting everything over here. Then I'm going to character and I want to click on bind. Now in earlier versions of the character tab, there is a commands tab that has the option for bind. But over here, I'm just going to click on bind. So now it's basically taking our rig and binding it or joining it onto our OBJ. So you can see some new items appeared over here. We've got a weight tag that has been created and a skin uh, icon here as well. So if you see the weight tag and skin, that means that the binding process has been completed successfully. To make the process of rotating some of these joints easier, let's just rename these joints. So from joint one, that was the first joint we created, which was by the feet. So I'll just double click over here, rename that feet. Then we've got knees. Then we've got groin. We've got chest, neck, and head. Now I'm gonna go to display, turn on quick shading so we can see our character. And everything's good to go. We can start posing this character or even animating it or creating a subtle animation. So you'll see if I go ahead and select the neck and select the rotate tool, I can actually start moving our character's head. So that's pretty cool. We can even create a completely new pose. You'll see if I select the groin, like I mentioned earlier, I can control some movement over here for the torso. Now, if I added some more joints, I could probably have a lot more control over 
maybe even the shoulders but if I select chest I do have a little bit of a control over the shoulder region so the more the more joints you create in your rig the more control you'll have over your character's movements right it's going to be a little bit more precise but we just need a basic rig for this tutorial okay and you can see I can have some control over the knees as well so to animate this is very simple let's say I'm going to the neck and maybe we've got a scene where our character's looking at something in the distance and I wanted to animate this, create a very idle animation. I just need to make sure this is selected so this automatically adds keyframes for me. So on frame 0 my character's looking this way and if I go to frame 20 let's say our character starts moving his head in that direction. So you can see it automatically keyed our movement from frame 0 to frame 20. So I'll just click on play and there we go he starts moving his head. So that's how you would animate this movement as well. Now again, I'm showing you something extremely basic. The main purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to set this up. You can obviously take a lot more time uh, to add better animation on here. But now you can obviously layer this. So maybe if I went to the groin, that's still selected. So until frame 20, our character maybe moves a little bit like that. But maybe in between these movements, I'm going to add maybe just some subtle movement moving back. Now this is still going to look a little bit robotic but you get you get the overall idea of what's going on here, right? You can add some movement and you can start animating a posed 3D scan human or get him in a completely different, pro, uh, different pose. So keep in mind that there's definitely limitations with the movement but I think it's a really nice way to alter the pose of an already posed character. So like I showed you we could select the neck and just repose this head. Maybe have him looking in a completely different direction but we don't want to push this to the, ex the extreme because obviously this is like something out of a horror movie like The Exorcist. We want to try and keep the movement believable because like I said there is certain limitations. right? Even if you select the knees we can turn this guy into Keanu Reeves right now, right? If we're pushing it to the extreme and he's dodging bullets from the Matrix, but <laughs> just just keep it believable, guys. Uh, subtle movements. We're trying to create a subtle animation, but again, if you're not even going the animation route, it's just a nice way to uh, repose a posed character. Okay, so I went ahead and applied the texture onto the character as well. And you can see everything being affected here in the live viewer. But I think it's just really cool that you can add subtle adjustments to an already posed uh, 3D character. So now you know how to set up those rigs. But the most important part of watching any tutorial is putting what you learned into practice. So go ahead, download other 3D scan models, set up these rigs, play around with it and see what you can end up doing. And just as a bonus, here are some other websites where you can get some 3D scanned humans. So obviously if you're watching this tutorial, you've already downloaded this character from CG Trader. But 3D Cap has some really nice 3D scanned humans. And then we've got render people here as well. Uh, you'll see a lot of these renders, especially with architectural uh, renders, you'll see a lot of these human beings. So that's renderpeople.com. But the actual holy grail of 3D scanned humans is definitely from the 3D scan store. Just the insane level of quality from these 3D scans will honestly blow your mind. So this is my number one resource when it comes to obtaining 3D scanned humans. Anyway, I hope you've learned a lot from this tutorial. I truly appreciate the support on this channel so much. And stay around, or should I say stick around, for some more videos and tutorials. Alright, goodbye.